Hello and welcome back to episode 9 of the MXGP21 career mode. Now in today's episode we are off to Italy for round 9. We were in Italy already this year in Megoria in round 3. I got my first race victory then on the Kawasaki back then. This time we're off to Sardinia, a beautiful part of the world. Let's see what we can do in Italy. So that is the end of qualifying and Beaton ends up on top. We're down in 17th. We are four seconds off. There they're about 41 compared to 30. 3.3 we'd say we're off. So not too bad overall. That's probably the closest we've been all year to the top. I enjoy this track a lot. It's really fun to ride. And again, I've changed up my riding style like I do every week. And it looks to be working. So let's jump into race one. I'm looking forward to this one. So I am really looking forward to this one. I believe we're going to have a good race here. It's all about to start. And we absolutely nail it once again. Race one, we always nail it. Unfortunately, we got absolutely belted into turn one. Drop all the way back to P14. And yeah, this is a, a fair win for a few races now that I get the whole shot. And because they go in so deep, they just absolutely clatter me. And I'd end up on my ass. And unfortunately, it's happened. And we went back down to P14. But I actually wasn't too worried for some reason. Because I've actually felt really, really quick around here. Even though, again, three, four seconds off in qualifying. That's just not really representative. Their qualifying times, they don't actually do. It's their calculated time, and they're just wrong. And, uh... Yeah, I believe I can probably not win again because I haven't really shown any pace in any race yet that I can actually win from being behind. So, it's kind of an unknown. So, it's going to be an interesting race this one. We've already made it back to P5. That's nine positions we've made back. And into this right-hander, we take two of them. That's P3 now. So, we're back up 11 positions in half a lap after being knocked off. So, at this point, it's like, hmm, that's interesting. And Van de Moustic, or Moustic, I should say, Van de Moustic, up ahead on the Kozaki. And we are reading him in. We are riding right at our limit, though. But just around here, I feel really confident I can ride really well. And uh, it's unfortunately for me, Jed Beaton in the lead. But we'll see what we can do. I'm actually quite confident in this race that I was able to pull it back. So it was quite fun to ride in this because I was really just giving it everything. Now, two and a half minutes left in race one, and Van de Moosdijk is catching Jed Beaton, which is good for me. And I'm kind of keeping pace with uh, Moosdijk. So it's just a matter if Moosdijk can catch Beaton and I can catch Moosdijk. I could actually win this race with two minutes left, and I was quite surprised at uh, the pace I was showing. So, yeah, I was pretty happy at this point, especially after we knocked off. You can see how gaffed the ride is behind, so it, it is a matter that I am just quick today for some reason i've managed to kind of crack it a little bit so we'll see how we get on a minute and a half left there's plenty of time plus two so there's probably three three and a half laps remaining so yeah it's going to be an interesting finish to this one and now van de moosdijk has got into p1 he's actually managed to pass jade beaten so Kozaki man is probably the fastest man on track. And at this point, I was thinking, forget the race win. I can get Jed beaten here, which is what was the main goal for me. Just to beat him because I needed to take points off him. So I'm riding really aggressively here, taking lots of risks. Just to see can I get alongside him. And just out there, again, you can see him making small mistakes. Because I'm pushing so hard to just get close to beating. When they get a bit of a gap, they're very hard to get anywhere near. So the fact that we are so close, I was pushing so hard. Just taking the wrong line through there again, just rushing the corner, wheelie really on exit. The uh, Kozaki man Van de Moustik is just absolutely pulling away. He's having serious race on the Kozaki. Good to see the Kozaki works in some aspects. Unfortunately, it just didn't work for me. But we're closing in on the back of beat. Now he goes to the outside. We're going to switch to the outside. And we get good drive, but we just don't get a good enough drive. He takes the outline. And that gets him better drive over the start finish straight. Now, two locks to go. And I believe we could probably get him into here if we just get good enough exit. And we actually done it. So we managed to catch and pass beat. And he was seconds up the road. So that was really good for us. And now we set off after on the Moose Dyke. Big wheelie again. 
really putting a lot of pressure on the Kozaki man. Just under two seconds is the gap. So, at this point I felt I could catch him. I am taking time out of him, again using a lot of clutch out of these slow corners and getting good drive. So we are, ooh, big moment there though, we are catching him. Just a matter if we can catch him in the allotted time. So we're not a million miles off the end of this lap now, and then we'll have one lap to go to catch him. Cross line out to start it. He still leads, we've taken a lot of time out of him. He's down to just over half a second. And again into here where we did pass, beaten. We're going to try it again, and we match him out of there. Archie just gets a bit better drive. Beaten is still in hot pursuit in P3, but we're alongside now and the Moose Dyke. And again, we're taking different lines now, and it's just not working out for us. So half a lap or so to go a nice scrub there showing off for the fans but it's going to be a tough one we try and cut across the line there he just sends out wide and we actually have managed to get into the lead somehow there a bit of a mistake from moose dyke but he jumps right to the back of me there and just tags the back of me he probably lost a bit of drive over that so we have the lead now the question is does he have anything to fight back Nice bit of track here like this little kicker here up over the tail floppy ball. Beautifully done. Riding really well. And now we are in the final sector. We pulled over second over Van de Moose Dyke. So we really have opened up a big gap. And then we made a big mistake there. A bit of a wheelie. Literally only one more corner to go. And we'll get a win. And this is by far the best win I've had. Just for the fact of coming from behind after the crash and still managing to beat them so that was a big win for me race two i'll expect a second win because my pace is quick you see 39.8 that was 1.2 quicker than we went in qualifying so van der moustijk third or second beaten third and the, the yamaha is not in the top four so one and four to one all the way down in p6 so they were split by my arch nemesis from a few episodes, Ruben Neves on or Ruben Fernandez on the CRF. So looking forward to race two after that because that was a good performance to get back to where we were. Especially since I didn't know the track, I didn't have any knowledge of the place coming here. So to be able to do that in race one, pretty damn happy. So yeah, let's say uh, let's try for another win in race two. So, on the grid again. Can we get a good launch this time? And we actually missed first gear. Somehow I put it into, it felt like I put it into gear, but obviously didn't register the button press. But we just managed to sneak up the inside of on the Moose Dyke. And back into the lead we go. So what can we do now that we have the lead nice and early in this one? First race we had a lot of work to do at this point in the race. But now we are in the lead. The only thing I will say is the track is not in a great condition. The riding conditions are much harder. So I'm going to have to be a bit more careful. As the track deteriorates, it just absolutely gets torn up. And I did notice in race two, a lot of lines just collapsing on me. And I was getting flicked off and all sorts of things happening. So you'll see later in the race, I do start changing up my lines. Just to limit the risk. But for now... We need to focus on getting a bit of a lead. How did I not fall off there? Huge moment. So under three minutes now. You can see that the lap time is under 43. So we are seconds slower than we were in race one. And that's just down to track track speed. The speed it just isn't in the track at the moment. Still is the Kawasaki of the Moose, Van de Moose Dyke. Jeez, that is a mouthful for an Irishman. In P2. I am thankfully comfortable, I'd say, in the lead. I'm still riding quite well. Track conditions at the moment aren't as bad, but the last few laps, they get a bit hairy. When everyone just absolutely tearing the place up. It gets very bumpy and very hard to ride. Especially these ones that used to see, them, you, just, you just drop out of the burn because they just start to roll over the edge of them. So many riders have pushed almost way through them. They're just not standing for it. So quite tricky to try and get a result in this one because I felt like I had the pace but also the track was it was a different track than I was quick on in race one so I had to be extra careful even though I knew I could probably just disappear and win it 
but pretty much nothing happened for the rest of this race. I was ahead of um, Ruben Fernandez for most of the race. We come in out to the final few corners, and it was a pretty easy win. Again, as the race went on, it just got more and more chaotic with the track. But the AI also really just didn't have pace. The fastest lap was a 40.4. I don't know even who took that. But we were in the 43s for most of that race. That was slower than qualifying. So we managed to get another double. Jed beaten down in P5. Ruben Fernandez doing a job for me. Coming home P2. Taking points off of Jaeger Gertz. And Maxime Renoir on the Yamahas. Vialid on P6. It's a bad day for everyone else in this championship. I take 12 points from this round over Ruben Fernandez, which is not a guy who's in the championship hunt at all. So I'm really interested to see now what the championship looks like. Have we taken the lead? I believe we have. We we'll hold the red plate, so all is looking good. And yes, we do. We have an eight point lead over Jed Beaton. And geez, we have 31 points over Tom Viale. So it's literally now down to me and Beaton for the rest of this season. So it's going to be a cracking finish. We have four rounds left. A point. Total of eight races. Could go anyone's way. This this is a great little fight in the MX2 Championship. So if you did enjoy today's episode, drop a like down below. Subscribe to see more in the future. I shall catch you all in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.